All right, let's take a look at what I've been doing here. I basically uh, got the new axle loaded up in there. Uh, everything looks really good. The uh, one thing that I was trying to accomplish was the springs are actually outboarded a quarter of an inch on each side uh, from where the spring perches were. It's hard to believe that these old Jeeps were actually had wider spring base than a three quarter ton, one ton Cummins pickup truck did. But uh, what I was trying to do is I was trying to do it the simplest way and slot the center pin here so that uh, basically the spring could line up on the uh, slotted hole which worked out great looks good I've got my new uh, uh, bump stops st bump stop plates uh, put in place they work great they're gonna hit this bump stop basically where this where you used to hit the axle uh, before you put the block on so you're gonna if you have a lift kit you're gonna need to get one of these plates so that uh, so that you can limit the travel so you don't over compress your new springs. Um, however, what I found out was that the spring plate actually is too close to the frame. It's, I mean, it's like right on the edge. It clears the taper, but it doesn't clear the side. So I think the only right thing to do is to knock these spring pads off, move them out a quarter of an inch that'll give me my spring plate clearance that I need to clear the frame I was hoping to avoid that but uh, I spent all kinds of time getting this all set up to find that out that's one of the things that uh, that you run into with trial and error okay also check it out check it out I've got my uh, spring or the shock brackets tacked in place that's going to be good there. I'll burn those in permanently when I do the new spring purchase. So just want to give you an update. This is a beast. This is a beast of a of an axle going in here. I'm uh, really happy with it. And hang in there and we'll watch the rest of it. Now, uh, I've been hard at work. I knocked the... Uh, these and knock these spring perches off what a pain that is if um if you've got these solid type they can take a beating uh during the removal process however if you got the the punched sheet metal type uh just buy new ones because you're going to ruin them in the process of taking them off but uh basically i've got uh got them off and work and of course I cleaned them up from all the uh, hacking and hammering that I had to do and we're gonna put them back on we'll drop the uh, vehicle down on top center the axle up underneath it that way everything is perfect and uh, we'll get that stuff done I also uh, welded up the, um, the shock mounts and let's get busy on that. I'll kind of show you how how this goes. Get it set up. Hang in there. Now well, we're at another junction here. Got it all back together. Got, it looks good. Everything's lining up nice. I haven't burned in the uh, spring pads yet because I'm gonna put the wheels on it. Put it on the ground on its own weight and then I'm going to measure for the drive shaft. So uh, let me go ahead and get that going and I'll keep you updated. But it's coming along pretty quick. I mean it's almost like it belongs there. Alright, it's about the time time of truth. Got the, uh, the new axle in. It's definitely limited slip posi. Uh, I can see it when I when I travel up the uh, the small hill in the grass. However, it's not done until we can do a burnout. So let's get started on that. All right. So we're gonna try to do this in a straightforward way. Kind of have a feeling that it's just gonna push the front tire, push it forward. So we'll just keep going 
until we're able to get this thing to spin. We'll take, borrow, cheat, or steal in order to get these two rear tires spin. Raining!
let's see what that looks like on video.